Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Just a quick update today on NVIDIA G-Sync. This week at Gamescom, NVIDIA announced that the hardware G-Sync module is being updated or more accurately replaced entirely with a new scalar solution in partnership with MediaTek. This will see the aging and to be honest, outdated G-Sync hardware module retired in favor of a more traditional scaler while retaining the features that were exclusive to the module. So as a quick recap of the G-Sync monitor ecosystem, for a long time now there's been a split in capabilities between G-Sync branded monitors and G-Sync compatible branded monitors. Full G-Sync products without compatible attached, for the most part used NVIDIA's proprietary G-Sync hardware module in place of a traditional scaler, bringing with it advanced features like variable overdrive and more recently ULMB2 and the Reflex Latency Analyzer. In contrast, G-Sync compatible monitors use standard scalers but are still compatible with NVIDIA GPUs for variable refresh rate functionality and they undergo some NVIDIA certification to receive that brand. G-Sync compatible monitors do not support ULMB2 and the Reflex Analyzer because those features are designed for the G-Sync module and therefore require it. There have been few, if any, updates to the G-Sync module since its introduction a decade ago. Over time, some of the features that were initially exclusive to the module have been adopted by some traditional scalar solutions, such as variable overdrive, reducing the need for the G-Sync module. Adaptive Sync has become more ubiquitous in standard scalars, whereas in the early days of VRR, the G-Sync module was one of the few variable refresh rate solutions. With no substantial updates for ages, newer features like HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 2.1 have not been compatible with the G-Sync module, making it less appealing on high-end displays. In addition, the module itself was expensive, typically raising the price of a monitor by over $150 US, and it required active cooling. Today's video is sponsored by the Ugreen Nexo 20,000 mAh power bank, a lightweight portable power bank with 130 watts of total power output. This is a super neat product with a TFT smart display on the front, showing you important info such as capacity, charge times, and input output power per port. It has a huge airline approved 20,000 mAh capacity, and the first USB C port can push up to 100 watts of power, perfect for charging laptops. This compact battery can deliver a 43% charge to a 16 inch MacBook Pro in just 30 minutes. It's really the perfect travel companion. So, to learn more about this U Green Nexode power bank, including the neat and compact 12,000 mAh 100 watt variant, click the link in the description below. What NVIDIA have announced this week is that they are essentially replacing and updating the G-Sync module with a new scalar solution from MediaTek, a third-party scalar manufacturer that provides many existing scalars for gaming monitors. This will allow new full G-Sync monitors to receive updated functionality like HDMI 2.1 while retaining the features that were previously only available with the module. NVIDIA told us this new MediaTek scaler is very similar to MediaTek's existing scaler hardware, but has been updated and extended with modifications to support G-Sync features, including ULMB2, the Reflex Analyzer, and the company's upcoming Pulsar technology. Pulsar is NVIDIA's new backlight strobing tech that works with Adaptive Sync simultaneously. This feature will only be supported by these new MediaTek scalers, not the old G-Sync module. The first scaler to support G-Sync features is the MediaTek MT9810, and this will be used in monitors later this year. The first wave will be 27-inch 1440p 360Hz monitors supporting Pulsar, the ASUS ROG Swift 360Hz PG27 AQNR, Acer Predator XB273UF5, and AOC Aegon Pro AG276QSG2. I saw a demo of Pulsar back at Computex, and it seemed to work quite well, so I'm pretty keen to check out those displays. The main benefits to consumers relate to cost. NVIDIA told us the MediaTek G-Sync scaler will be significantly cheaper than the old hardware module, reducing the cost of displays using their tech. I don't know whether there will still be a G-Sync tax relative to a similar monitor without G-Sync features. I imagine there will be, because additional features usually lead to a higher price but this shouldn't be as linked to the actual cost of the scalar hardware anymore. The MediaTek scalar does not require active cooling, so no more mandatory fans inside G-Sync monitors. Some displays still use active cooling even when they don't use the G-Sync module. We've seen that with a range of OLEDs, but it will now be possible to design full G-Sync monitors with full feature support and no active cooling. 
It also opens the door to a more modern feature set. HDMI 2.1 is definitely supported by the new MT9810 chip and will be included on the first wave of monitors. Nvidia also say that G-Sync will be part of a selection of other MediaTek scalers going forward and there's no limitations on features. So DisplayPort 2.1 and other new technologies will be possible in full G-Sync monitors as those scalers become available. I asked NVIDIA about support for OLEDs with this new G-Sync scaler, and they confirmed that theoretically OLED panels will be supported through this partnership, although the initial focus is on high-end LCD panels. We've already seen some OLEDs use the old G-Sync module, like the Alienware AW3423DW, but across all of the latest OLEDs, this wasn't really that common at all, so we'll see whether that changes with new MediaTek chips. Of course, whenever there's discussion of G-Sync and the hardware module, there's always talk about compatibility and how these products work with non-NVIDIA GPUs. This was a huge issue with the initial wave of full G-Sync monitors, which only provided adaptive sync on NVIDIA GPUs. A later update to the module opened up adaptive sync support to all other input devices that support VASER adaptive sync, for example, AMD GPUs over FreeSync. However, more recent features like ULMB2 and the Reflex Analyzer remained basically exclusive to NVIDIA GPU owners. NVIDIA tells me that compatibility with new MediaTek G-Sync scalers is identical to the existing G-Sync module. What this means is that variable refresh rates, variable overdrive, HDR, all of the standard types of features will work across all GPU brands, whether you go NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, or even game consoles. However, any NVIDIA-specific additions and extensions to the scaler will only be compatible with NVIDIA GPUs. This includes the Reflex Analyzer, Pulsar, and probably future NVIDIA technologies as well. What remains a bit unclear at this stage is ULMB support. Backlight strobing has, of course, been available across a wide range of monitors, those that use the G-Sync module and those that use traditional scalers. ULMB and ULMB2 support, NVIDIA's version of this technology, has varied and isn't technically restricted to NVIDIA GPUs, it's just that on some monitors, practically speaking, you needed an NVIDIA GPU for this feature to work. This is because many G-Sync ULMB monitors don't have a way to disable adaptive sync in the monitor's OSD. On NVIDIA GPUs, you'd head to the control panel on your PC, turn off G-Sync variable refresh rates, the monitor would switch out of its adaptive sync mode into a fixed refresh mode, and then ULMB or ULMB2 would become available. On AMD GPUs, there's no way to fully switch out of the adaptive sync mode in Radeon software. There is a toggle to switch off variable refresh rates, but this just turns off VRR processing while remaining in the monitor's adaptive sync mode, effectively sending a fixed refresh rate signal over adaptive sync. There's no take this monitor out of its adaptive sync mode button. This difference in operation, NVIDIA GPUs switch out of the adaptive sync mode, AMD GPUs do not, means that monitors without an OSD adaptive sync toggle cannot be put into a mode where ULMB2 is available on AMD GPUs because, well, adaptive sync is always on and therefore ULMB is always disabled. However, if you force an AMD GPU to disable adaptive sync, for example, by not installing AMD's GPU driver, ULMB and ULMB2 does actually work on AMD GPU hardware just fine, confirming the feature is not technically restricted to NVIDIA GPUs. Theoretically, this means that the new MediaTek G-Sync scalers could support ULMB backlight strobing on non-NVIDIA GPUs, provided there is a toggle to disable adaptive sync in the monitor's OSD. We'll have to wait and see how that ends up, though I suspect the Reflex Analyzer and Pulsar will remain exclusive to NVIDIA GPUs and require special communication with NVIDIA drivers. All up, this looks like a positive improvement for the G-Sync ecosystem. Features like Pulsar look great and innovative based on what I've seen so far, but they can't be held back by an outdated, expensive G-Sync module that lacks other modern features. Moving to a more traditional scalar setup through a partnership with a company like MediaTek is long overdue, and I'm keen to check out what these monitors bring later this year. So anyway, that's it for this quick update to the NVIDIA G-Sync ecosystem. I thought this news was interesting, so I thought let's make a video on it. Let's talk about some of the things that we chatted with NVIDIA about. So hopefully you've all enjoyed this one. And yeah, thanks for watching. You can support us via Patreon or Floatplay. Links are in the description below. And I'll catch you in the next one.